I'm Carl Anthony, Managing Editor for AutoVision News, and welcome to AutoSense Insights. We're speaking today with Matt Daly, who is the Operations Director for Art and Pro. And Matt, it's good to see you again. Yes, thanks, Carl. Good to see you too. So Matt, there is a lot of exciting things happening at RM Pro, and I, I want to get to all of that. But first, for our viewers who may not be familiar, can you tell us a little bit about RF Pro and give us an overview of the company? Sure. Yeah. So um, RF Pro is a, a simulation engine for the development of ADAS, autonomous vehicles, vehicle dynamics, um, HMI. And we have both a, um, a software engine that sits in the center, and we provide very high detailed 3D world models as well that come and sit inside that as content. Right. So with that in mind, because I, I want to get to these world models, because that's one of the well, that's one of the exciting pieces of news that you do have. But I want to talk for a second, Matt, about your data farming solution. And yeah. you've been given some really strong backing from Denso, from Amberella just this year. So how satisfying is it to see those developments and to see those developments being spoken about by industry partners and customers? Uh, it's, it's hugely satisfying. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of work that happens across the divisions of our company. So um, all of the, the people inside the software development division had to you know, completely add this, this new feature and this new mode into RF Pro from a, from a software side. And then we have the, the content development division. So those guys are having to continually produce such high quality uh, graphical models that people see. And sure. now they're adding in this, this really detailed uh, level of um, object specification. So we're able to actually produce the ground truth outputs coming from these models as well. So that, that's been a really big challenge for them to, to build those in. And finally, I think really satisfying for our support and our customer development teams that they work so closely with these customers and with such market leading customers to, to have them publicly, you know, happy to, to talk about their partnership and relationship with RF Pro is, is just really rewarding for the whole team. Yeah, it's really exciting news. And, and you know, especially again, the backing from Denso, the backing from Amarella. So I, I think the, the next question our viewers probably have, Matt, is, you know, with these initial use cases, you know, what do you expect will be the follow on from these use cases? Sure. So uh, the initial use cases that the customers are doing, they're collecting such huge volumes now of um, training data. And they're doing that at a, at a system level. So they're now able to simulate their entire vehicles um, and collect all of the training data they would like from them. The next challenge that they're adding in because of data farming is they're able to simulate real difficult edge cases like adding motion blur into scenes, having LED flicker being built into those models. And so the real challenge for them now is to, to take that and start to create really high quality um, edge case training data ready for them to use at volume. Right. And so now, Matt, with that in mind, I guess, you know, the next logical question then would be, so what major steps then will you take with your industry partners to improve the quality of that training data and those images? Yeah, so that, I mean, that's where it's really, really exciting because um, along with our industry partners, you know, a big major milestone is going to be getting them physical sensor models of the actual devices they're using. So being able to deliver um, imager models now that, that match and, and really recreate the exposure control, the LED flicker mitigation um, processes that those physical devices they're using uh, help them with and building that into their training data is, is going to be so powerful for our customers to, to really accelerate the, um, the volume and validity of, of, the, of that data. Right. So that's, that's one big news item that you have. There's another news item, another new development, Matt, that I wanted to talk about. So this month, the big thing in the news 
you and Zenzik UK, the Connected and Automated Mobility Roadmap, you are now part of that initiative. How did that develop? How did that come to fruition for RF Pro? Sure. So um, Zenzik's been around for a, a long time, uh, and their you know their mission is to really show to the world that the UK has some of the best facilities here when organizations want to have to train, test, validate their own vehicles in, in real world situations. So a number of years ago, we, we started working actually with Millbrook, which was one of the Zensic test beds. And so we worked with them, uh, built up a very, very high quality uh, digital model of their entire proving ground. Um, and that's been available for RF customers for a, a number of years now to, to build into their simulations. And it sort of snowballed from there. And so afterwards, we started working with the University of Warwick, so WMG, uh, as part of the Midlands Future Mobility Testbed Program. So that's another one of the um, parts of, of Zensic's overall strategy. And so we've built up some really lovely, high quality models of this time public roads. And that's, that's really an industry first to have um, such a, a high quality public road digital model matching a physical test bed that's fully instrumented in order to record and help companies do this, this, um, this correlation work between uh, the real and the virtual world. Right. And we sort of followed that on slightly um, just to complete the story with Zenzik is the addition of the um, Smart Mobility Living Lab in London. So this is another one of the public road based test beds in the UK. So um, really happy to be, you know, announcing the partnership we have with SMLL as well uh, and offering to customers um, an equally high quality, very detailed model that they can use in RF Pro for their simulation work. Of course. So Matt, this is going to lead me into a two part question. So let's let's just go with the first question I have here. But what is the advantage of having these high fidelity models? Why is this significant to the industry and to your customers? Yeah. I think it comes back to a, a, you know, a really basic engineering principle, which is correlation. Yeah, it's, it's great for customers and, and developers to start with um, simplistic, uh, generic environments and scenarios. But then the real key to exploiting simulation is having trust in that simulation. So you have to correlate your results continuously back to the real world to ensure that you are um, getting valid data and really valuable results from your simulation. And that's where these models come in because in order to do that correlation, the best thing you can do is do your testing in the same virtual location that you're doing your physical testing. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a very common principle that's been used in the automotive and the motorsport industries for years and years and years. When you have high um, trust and correlation from your simulations, you can then exploit them and you can exploit them rapidly to do far more testing uh, and development work than, you can, than your budget physically allows you to do in the real world. Right, yeah, there, there's a time and a cost advantage, I, I would think, as well, right? Yeah, and it's not just time and cost. There's, there's sort of even more than that. There's, there's like a fundamental knowledge that you can't get from real-world testing. So you can't instrument your vehicles in every single node and every single junction in your, in your physical vehicle. You don't have enough wires or data storage capacity on your real vehicle to achieve that. But in simulation, you can really drill down to individual decisions that your software or, or your hardware is, is passing on between each component and get that fundamental data out of the simulations as well. So it's, um, yeah, it's not just the time and money, you actually get more knowledge if your simulations are good. Sure. And so Matt, this leads me to the second of the two questions I have, but you had mentioned before the tremendous infrastructure in the UK to do this and to have these models and to conduct this testing and to facilitate the development of autonomous vehicles. But 
Are there any other sites like this around the world and in other countries outside of the UK that you yeah. are aware of? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, the US is a number of them backed by the, the government. So places like M City, you know, have been around for a long time up in Ann Arbor in Michigan. And you know, we're really proud that, again, we've got a beautiful, accurate, highly um, correlated digital model of M City that customers can use there. But there's also places like Willow Run and a number of other um, initiatives over in the US. Uh, in Europe, obviously, you've got commercial uh, proving grounds like EDADA that um, customers often want to use in both simulation and physical testing. But actually, there's also all of the proving grounds of the OEMs and tier ones. You know, they all have their own private proving grounds that um, they do their physical testing at. And I think that's one of the that's that's one of the key strengths of our partnerships is when we know that the OEMs and tier ones trust us to come and scan and build their private proving grounds. And it really solidifies that long-term investment they're making in simulation that you know we've got we've got private proving grounds built for OEMs in the US, in Europe, in Korea, in Japan. And and that really is because they understand this correlation principle. Right. Matt, one of the things I thought was really interesting in the work that you're doing right now with uh, WMG, yeah. in the press release, you had you gave this wonderful analogy of a Formula One simulator. Uh, this wonderful, yeah, uh, the the Formula One simulator, s simulator, and how the Monday morning after a race, they use the simulator and then they correlate that data with the actual real race car. And you had made an analogy of how that's useful to autonomous vehicle testing as well. Can you explain that a little bit more? I think that is sure. so interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure it's an analogy, more of dragging up horrible parts of my past. Um, <laughs> I spent I spent years in um, a couple of Formula One teams uh, as a development engineer in their driver in the loop simulators. So that uh, that weekly routine and uh, really gets drilled into you, and it's essential. It's absolutely essential. And what's very lucky in the motorsport industry is that they they have correlation exercises every weekend. Now that's not what they call them. They call them races and they televise them and they sell lots of advertising you sure. know, to people to, to build the industry. But for a lot of the engineers, it's just a weekly correlation exercise of saying, I've done all of my simulations in the week and we can now go and collect data physically at the weekend. And on the Monday, I can check again how good I was last week. Mm -hmm. And the key there is finding those little areas of, uh, of where the correlation isn't so good, working on them, improving them, and then every week you're in this cycle of constant model and simulation improvement that gives you additional uh, development capability. And, and the best teams in the motorsport exploit that. They know how to do it and they do that really well. And it's something that I think the automotive industry and the AV industry must be doing too. And they should be doing too because regular correlation exercises uh, allow you to have confidence in your simulations that really help you exploit then the, the power that simulation can give you. Right. So Matt, with all of this exciting news, as we head into 2021, what is next for RF Pro? What are some of the goals you have for the new year then? Sure. Um, I think some of the, the big things are gonna come within the rendering pipelines as well. So, you know, we talked earlier about how our data farming has uh, allowed us to really look at the details of sensor models. So um, the next big steps there are going to be extending the rendering pipeline. So incorporating fully ray traced images. So, you know, being able to really detail, detail model challenging edge case scenarios. You know, imagine being in a tunnel where you've got you know, large amounts of complex lighting happening. You've got uh, lots of motion blur. You've got uh, lighting at the end of the tunnel and multiple vehicles around you. You know, these are things that are really, really challenging for AVs. And being able to simulate those and build those accurately into your training data sets um, is yeah, the, the next exciting stage of RF Pro's history. I, I think this is so exciting, Matt, the work that you're doing with the training data, the simulation models, the work that you're doing on the academic side, the, the, the correlation between Formula One racing and self-driving cars. It's, it's, I, it, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. In, in, the last, in the last few minutes that we have, 
Is there anything you'd like to add or anything you'd like to go over and just and, and just summarize again one more time? No, I think from our side, we're, you know, we, we could probably talk all day. So, so the sooner you, you, you shut us up, the better sometimes. <laughs> Matt, it has been wonderful. Um, from all of us here at AutoSense, we want to wish you the best of luck going forward. Thank and you. I'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Lovely. Thanks, Kyle. Good to see you. For more great content from AutoSense, check out our hub and our YouTube channel. Just search AutoSense. <laughs>